they'll put up there, like, you know, like today was bring your jersey and bring a friend. So don't feel bad that you didn't have a Cowboys jersey to bring, guys. <laughs> oh, not, not many Cowboy fans, huh? <laughs> you can have a seat. So today, to kick off our new sermon series... Our new sermon series this uh, next few Sundays is Proceed. Proceed, moving through the process. Proceed. So I'm excited for this new sermon series starting. And let's prepare our hearts and our minds for what the Lord wants to speak to us. This word proceed, it's a, it's a word of encouragement, it's a word of affirmation, and it's a word of discipline. So I, I just want, um, and, and God's going to give you that exactly where we're at in whatever situation that we're going through, in whatever process that we're going through, that's what God exactly wants to give us through this sermon series, encouragement, word of affirmation, and discipline. And you know that once God speaks to your life through this process, you're also going to apply this word to the next process that you go through. Whatever season that you go through, this is a word that God is going to reveal to your heart, reveal to your spirit, to your mind. And you're just going to be able to carry it on to the next, uh, to the next process that you go through. So this is a sermon series that will alter, transform your mind, and increase your faith in him. So don't miss a Sunday. Bring a friend. Don't come alone because this is a word that everybody needs to hear because we all go through process. Even if we're in church and we know God or we don't know God, but we all go through processes. We all go through seasons in life, and they might need an encouragement. If God's putting somebody in your heart, in your mind, then that's the person that you need to bring. So just be praying about that. God, I want to bring somebody. I want to bring a friend. Just continue to pray, and God will place somebody in your heart. And just bring them. Just be obedient and bring them. So proceed. Let's go ahead and get started. Proceed. First of all, if you Google the word proceed, the definition that comes up says begin or continue a course of action to move forward, especially after reaching a certain point. So that's what Google says, to begin or continue a course of action. Now let's look at it in the word of where we got this, where our senior pastor got this word proceed. If we can go to Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 14. And when you have it, if you could please say amen. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Amen. Everybody has it? Amen. If you don't have it, you can look up out here on the screen. And it says like this. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not reached it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So Paul here shares two things with us, two things that will help us achieve and reach our heavenly prize. And what are those two things? Well, the first involves forgetting what lies behind us. It's forgetting the past, forgetting everything that happened in the past because dwelling on the past can be a huge hindrance in making progress onto something new. It could be like a chain holding us back to our past, now allowing us to move forward, but to live in the past. An example can be that uh, we're dwelling on things that we regret that we didn't do, or that uh, we neglected to do, or things that we regret that we did do. 
So anything from your past that can be holding you back, and, and the point is that you are dwelling on those things in the past instead of living in the, few, in the present. Because maybe we could be living in the present, but yet we're still thinking about things that we did in the past of like, man, I regret not doing that. I regret not doing that. And your mind is back here, but you're living right here. And we're like, it's like a chain holding us back to our past, not allowing us to move forward, to live in the present. Let's look at Paul's life, for example, the one who tells us this verse. His past was kind of crazy. He, ha he was so zealous for the things of the word of God of the Old Testament that he persecuted the early church. We find in Acts that he made a chaos for the early church, entering every house, dragging off people to prison. They were killing. He was against people proclaiming the gospel of Jesus. And that's what he did. That was his past. That was his past. Imagine what would have happened if he would sit there every day and dwell on the past that he did. Can you imagine if this man, Paul, after being, having an encounter with Christ and God was transforming his life, he would sit there and be like, man, but all the things that I did, all the people I killed, the people I sent to prison, man, I persecuted the church, I did all of that. But no, this is the man that is telling us to leave our past behind and to move forward. Can you imagine what, he, what his life would have come out to be if he dwelled on his past? He wouldn't have been able to move forward. You see, we all have things that we regret, and they can discourage us, us from believing that God can do anything positive through us. So if he would have sat there, Paul would have sat there and dwelled on the past mistakes, errors, everything that he did, then he wouldn't have been able to push forward. He wouldn't have been able to say, okay, you know what? I did that. I regret it. Uh, God has forgiven me, but now I can move forward. Then he would have been stuck in a mindset of not th thinking that God couldn't use him at all. So it can sometimes discourage us from believing that God can use us in a positive way. And at times, it's the enemy the one that can bring charges against us like that, feeding our mind with ideas that we are beyond repair for God and that God can't use us or God doesn't want to use us because of our past regrets or our, our past errors. But the key thing is when the enemy comes to remind you of your past, we as a body of Christ need to remind him of his future. Amen? Right? Am I going too fast, guys? <laughs> we must remember that for the enemy, the next best thing from turning someone away from walking in a close relationship with Christ is to make them ineffective. Is to make them ineffective. If he can get a Christian that has decided to follow Christ, but then brings all this condemnation, brings all this shaming to their minds, to their lives, then the Christian is not going to be walking anymore. It's going to be standing there ineffective, being useless, a useless Christian. That's what the enemy, okay, the enemy, I can't get you from following Christ, but let me see, let me get you over here in this ineffective stage. Let me get you in this useless stage. So that's what the enemy is going to try to do. And if we dwell in the past and allow those regrets to discourage us, we become ineffective because we can't live in the present but with chains holding us to the past. Our senior pastor has shared with us um, that his Bible Institute teacher would say, when you fall, get back up quickly. And this happened to me about two years ago. I made a really bad mistake, a really dumb mistake. I felt horrible about it and I was dwelling on it too much and I couldn't get out of it and I was just like oh but I did this and that's all I was talking about with my husband and my husband's like get over it already like move forward and I'm like I can't because oh I feel horrible I can't believe I did that and then all of a sudden I was laying in bed just still thinking like man I did this I'm horrible I can't believe it like and the Holy Spirit reminded me of this he said get up get back up quickly but he added, and dust yourself off and leave no evidence of the fall. 
And I was like, wow. If I leave no evidence of the fall, there is nothing that the enemy can grab onto. He cannot come with his condemnation. He cannot come with his shaming and try to make me ineffective because I'm not holding onto it anymore. I shook it off and I'm saying, yes, I failed. Yes, I made a mistake, but I'm shaking it off and I'm not leaving evidence for the enemy to come and I'm not leaving evidence for myself to come back and just sit there. He was very firm with me, get back up quickly, but shake it off, leave no evidence. But we're talking about dwelling on the bad things, but what about dwelling on the good things? That should be okay, right? Because they're good things after all. Are we supposed to forget those good things also? But actually we need to. We need to forget the good things because bad things can come from out of those good things. Because if we focus just on our past achieve, uh, good achievements, it's an implication that we are resting on past achievements and we are preparing for future ones. So we're dwelling, oh, I did this. Oh, man, five years ago, I did this, man. I, God was using me in prayer and, and everything. But that's speaking five years ago. What about today? The way that you were seeking God five years ago, man, it should have been doubled, if not tripled by now. And God, you're increasing. God should have been more and not just speaking of the past things. Then that means you're stuck back here and you're not looking forward to the way that God wants to use you now where you are at. You're just stuck on the past and you're not preparing for the future ones that are to come. God is into the business of transforming us into his likeness with ever increasing glory. So that means that he is taking us from glory to glory, not just bringing us here to glory and leaving us there and not continue the transformation in us. No, the word of God says that he is transforming us into his likeness with ever increasing glory. From glory to glory to glory to glory, that's what God has for our lives. So he's not into, oh, I took you to the first stage, stay there, live your whole life there. No, God has more for us. So if we are just focused on the good achievements or even on the bad things, there's no way that we can go forward. There's no way that we can move from the ever-increasing glory that God has set for every single one of us. We must forget the good and the bad. We cannot allow anything to hold us back. But this doesn't mean that we must ignore the past completely. If mistakes have been made, then we need to learn from them. We need to grow from them, but make it right if possible. And do not allow for that mistake or regret to make you think that God can never use you again. Let's move forward. Let's go. Let's let it go and move forward. And the same is for true, uh, for, uh, true for positive encouragements. Save, savor the moment. Enjoy the moment, but then move on. Living in the past can be a huge roadblock to moving forward. So that's the first thing that Paul tells us, to leave the past behind, to move forward, leave it all behind us. And the second thing that he tells us is, um, Paul tells us is to look forward to what lies ahead. The NIV version says, straining towards what is ahead. I like that. Because we are straining. You know when you are straining for something, you are straining to what lies ahead. And that's what Paul's telling us, to look to what is ahead and to strain to get it. If we want to strain forward for something, we cannot do well in the past. If I am pushing forward for something and I'm straining to get it and I'm working to it, but then I have chains behind me, it's going to be like, you're going to be like this in a tug of war, just trying to go, but you can't because some, your past is pulling you. Either bad or good, your past is pulling you back like chains. And you're trying to strain, but you can't. But when, you're fo when you let go of your past and you're focused of like what lies ahead, then you can just go, you can just go, you can just go, you can just go. Because your focus is on what's ahead and you're straining for it, you want it, you're hungry for it, you're gonna walk to it, you're gonna run to it, you're gonna get it and nothing can hold you back. And when we are trying to pull forward, but we're chained to the past, that's one thing. 
But what about if we get to the point that we forget our past and we're going, right? But there's something else that can come and affect us and can strain us from moving forward. And that's when fear comes in. That's when doubt comes in. That's when weariness comes in. But when we really understand who we are in Christ, then fear, regret, doubt, weariness, whatever wants to come and disrupt your process doesn't have power over us. When we have a clear picture of what we are straining towards, when we have a clear picture of what we are looking forward to, then nothing can hold us back. When we have that clear picture, and that clear picture should be to be everything that God created us to be. That clear picture should be, I am a child of God. Jesus went to the cross for me to live a life in abundance, in love, in peace, and joy. You should strain forward to that. Focus on that, and you left your past behind. Then fear comes. Be like, no fear. Jesus is going before me. I cannot fear. No doubt. My God is faithful. There's no doubt in me. And you stay focused. You look forward. And that's a key word. You look forward. You don't look to the sides. You look forward. Because if you look to the side, then there's fear knocking at your door. And if you look to the other side, there's doubt knocking on your door. And if you look around, there's weariness and you start just getting distracted. That's why the key word is to stay focused, to go forward. When we have a clear picture that we are a child of God, then we are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. We know that we are greater because of him who is in us than who is in the world. Then fear, doubt, and regret cannot hold us back. Paul wants us to let go of the past, train, strain forward to what lies ahead, just as he had done. And how I had mentioned Paul's life, Paul was, I believe, the most appropriate person to give us this advice because of everything that he, his past was about. But yet he was able to leave his past of, uh, behind. He knew how important and how vital it was to leave your past behind. He knew how it could come and interrupt your present. So he was the most appropriate person to tell us, leave your past behind and move forward. He knew the importance of leaving it all behind and straining to what lies ahead. And you might be thinking, well, what lies ahead, right? And it says, to reach the end of the race, receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. We, we each must proceed in the race set before us, not to grow weary, not to fear, not to stop, or not to give up. We each have a different race to run. That's the beauty of life that God made every single one of us different. We each have our own race. Our race is not the same as our neighbors. Our race is not, it's the, our, we each have our own race. And we must not compare our races with everybody around us. We each have a unique DNA to leave an impact in this world that no one else can leave but only you. So do not look at the person around you. Do not look at the people around you because God has a specific race for you to run and do not compare. I think that's one thing that I have always struggled with. Even in the last sermon series, I was telling pastor that I was freaking out because my husband was hearing one of his sermon series, one of the sermons of altars. And I was like, oh my goodness, it's completely different. Oh my, and I started like freaking out. And I was like, okay, no. I have uh, 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 the Lord leading me how to speak to the English service and pastor speaking to the Spanish service. So I was completely freaking out, but my race is different than pastors. My, the way I preach is different. Even for my husband, we all have our different way that God, we all have different gifts. We all sing different. We all preach different. We all speak different. We all learn different. So it's not that you are weird and you're the odd person. No, you're just different. I just finished a, uh, a research paper for school of the gifts of the Spirit. And my title is long because we were speaking about the gifts of Christ, the gifts of the Spirit, and, our, and we took a personality test. So I am a mentoring, serving pastor with the spiritual gifts of knowing. 
It was like, wow. So every single one of you in here, you're different. Every single one of us, there's something unique and special about you that only you can leave an impact and imprint in this world. Nobody else can. Nobody else can leave it like you. So the way, the processes that you are going through, that's why you must proceed because there is something that you need to leave in this world that nobody else can. So we must proceed through the race. We all go through seasons and we must proceed through them. We all go through processes and we must proceed through them. We all go through trials and we must proceed through them. We all go through storms and we must proceed through them. Even when we're in the midst of the hardest times, in the midst of obscurity, we must proceed. In those moments in life when we want to give up, when we want to see, what, when we can't see what's ahead of us, we must proceed. And that's one thing that I have struggled with that I can't see up ahead and I want to like, God, what's going on? And I start freaking out. And I just ex experienced this two years ago when they found out I had thyroid cancer and I felt like I couldn't see past the forward anymore. I felt like I had no future. I was already putting myself to death and I was just like, man, I, I couldn't see forward. I couldn't shake it off. I couldn't see forward. I felt like I didn't have control of my life. And that was the problem, that I wanted to have control of what was going to be the outcome instead of giving God control. So we must proceed through our processes, even though we don't know what is the next step, even though we don't know what is the next step we're going to take, we must trust that the next step is there because of God. We must trust that he knows the outcome. And you know how crazy my process was? I was thinking about it when I was studying this, is that, I did a sermon series in the English service of refinement, of being refined in the middle of that process. So I was up here preaching, crying, because it was crazy that I was actually preaching what I was going through. God was putting me through the fire to melt away, to take away the impurities that were in me. And what were those impurities? I had anxiety. I was full of anxiety and worry and fear, like you have no idea. And the Lord had to place me in that fire to remove all the impurities, to be like, trust me, trust me, trust me. And that's all he was trying to get through my head. And he got it through my head. He got it through my head. So it doesn't matter what moments that we go through in life, we must proceed in those moments that we have lost so much that it hurts to even proceed, we must proceed. We must proceed in life, and me and you can proceed in life because of faith in our Lord Jesus. We can proceed because of who he is. We can proceed in life in whatever midst of storm that you are in. You can proceed. You can go through it. And the beauty is it that we can proceed because the Lord is our shepherd. We can proceed because he will lay us down in green pastures. We can proceed because he leads you beside still waters. We can proceed because he restores your soul. We can proceed because he leads you in the path of righteousness. We can proceed because even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will not fear because his rod and his staff, they comfort me. We cannot, we can proceed because he prepares a table before the presence of our enemies. We can proceed because even though 10,000 fall at your side, none shall come near you. We can proceed because he will anoint your head with oil and your cup should overflow. We can proceed because surely his goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. We can proceed because the Lord is for you and not against you. We can proceed because he loves you. We can proceed because you are faithful because you are blessed, because you are a child of the Most High God. We must proceed. Yes. And we must proceed so we can do well in the house of the Lord. And I'll finish here. We are in a process 
And we can say, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I was. I'm moving forward, I'm doing, and I'm working at it. I have closed the past and left it behind. I cried when I needed to cry. I laughed when I needed to laugh, and I made mistakes. I erred in so many ways, but I don't live there anymore. I didn't stay there, and I can't stay here. I must proceed. I don't know where you are right now, what process you are in. Our processes are different. But God, this, that's why I said that this is a word of encouragement. This is a word of um, affirmation, but this is a word of discipline. Because, yes, he's encouraging us to proceed, to move through the process, to go forward. And it's affirmation of, yes, child, you're doing good. Continue going. Set your eyes forward. But it's also discipline. How much of the past are you still holding on to and you haven't let go? How much of your past are you not giving to me? How much of your past are you still wanting to deal with? So it's all three, and it's all to increase our faith in him and trust of who he is, trust that he is our provider, to trust that he is our father, to trust that the love that he has for us is so pure and true, it's not going to hurt us or damage us. Trust that the plans that he has for us There was something yesterday, the quote that I gave you. We must, we can only proceed, we can only proceed in the measurement of our faith. We can only proceed in the measurement of our faith. How is our faith? We want to proceed forward, but can we not, if our faith is still holding on to the past errors and to the past things, then our faith is. God, we're saying, God, you haven't forgiven me yet. But yet, Jesus went to the cross for me and you for our sins. He forgives a multitude of errors. So why are we still holding on to them? God already forgot them. God already forgave you for them. But why are we, how dare we still hold on to something when the creator of all already said forgiven, forgotten, but we still hold on to it then our faith is probably shaky in the Lord because we don't have faith to move forward and say he's forgiven me. We don't have faith in believing the power that the cross did for every single one of us. For every, for every single one of us. We must proceed, move through the process. 